What's up guys, we are here with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we are going to do a year in review. We are going to take a look at the teams that were released throughout this year, see which teams they were nice throughout the year, what teams disappointed and see if I'm ready for Apocalypse. Am I ready for Apocalypse after one year? This is what we are going to try to assess and see what we have to go what we have to do to move forward and get closer and closer to Apocalypse. So, as always, if you like information on this video, make sure to share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content and make sure you smash that like button. Otherwise, Apocalypse is going to visit your house and uh, is going to scare you while you're sleeping under the bed, of course. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at uh, what we have, what was released this year, which teams we had to invest in, and which teams made it through throughout the year in terms of value, and which teams completely drop in terms of value. Okay, so we start with the Web Warriors. Web Warriors, they were, really, they were necessary for Pestilence, for the Scourge, and they were also necessary for the Raids. And now they are no longer necessary for anything. Yikes, big, big yikes. So, yeah, um, and the value of these characters for like Dark Dimension and so on, different game modes, yikes, they completely lost their value. And that's very disappointing. We have uh, some iconic characters here. And that uh, most people love from the comics, from TV shows, from the movies, and uh, and it's unfortunate because uh, iconic team they completely fell off, and right now it's very very hard to find or justify any kind of investment on them or value to, to give to them. So unfortunately, the Web Warriors are done. They were a great team. They were required for Morgan of Fay, but now that's no longer the case, and that's disappointing because this team now is gone. It's gone, it's no longer needed. Okay, let's talk about the Uncanny and look at the investments. Huge investment, 1 million power. Let's talk about the Uncanny. This is a different story. They only have one new character released and we, it was Magic. And Magic, at the beginning, she really surprised people, including myself, because her stats were so crappy. She had so low HP, the damage was barely okay, but what she did to the team, it was just amazing. For Not only for the Uncanny team, but also for different teams. Uh, any team with an X-Men tag should give Drain, should give Barrier, or specific tags, they would also give Armor. and. Uh, she would give charges to characters that were chargeable, like Storm, like Cyclops, like Colossus, and that made, a, made, that made a huge impact. And even that I don't have a huge investment on these characters, their value really comes through because they can punch up so much, it's unbelievable. Even against the horseman teams like uh, the Gamma team with Red Hulk, even against those teams, the Uncanny can, uh, can defeat them and even punch up 200k, 300k, even 400k. I I've done this in videos and uh, yeah this is a team that uh, hold value throughout the year and I would say that going forward it's still gonna hold some value Alliance Wars Cosmic Crucible Avengers Tower and uh, and yeah it's, it's great that we can get uh, some value out of these teams even without having huge investment in them so this team was definitely a surprise and uh, it's definitely something that uh, we want to see more in the game it's team like these teams that have value in different situations and uh, don't die off after their raid meta is over or anything like that okay let's move on to the next team we have the ravagers and the ravagers they were big big disappointment at least for me because i had a, a six uh, red star as yondu and i really wanted him to be good Unfortunately, it was not the case. The, the rework was a little bit disappointing. The minions that uh, Yondu summons, they are actually better than himself. But yeah, that's the that's the problem with a few characters. Either way, we have one character released that is going to hold value, not only throughout the year, but it's going to hold value going forward, which is Star-Lord T'Challa. And this is a team that I mostly skip, but Yondu I had geared him up in the past. And the Star Lord Ashala, he was necessary for the raid, uh, for the tech raids, for the tech teams, and. Uh 
it was very important because he's the first character that removes energy from the enemies and that was a game changing mechanic it was extremely helpful and even now he's still helpful in different game modes cosmic crucible alliance wars where, wherever you want to use this character is going to to give you some value on top of that he also does massive burst damage and uh, he copies the positive effects that he has next to him so if he has like other characters with tons and tons of positive effects he's going to benefit out of that and that gives him a flexibility that will allow him to hold value not only throughout this year but probably also throughout the next year so yeah the ravagers they were also necessary for the um, let me think for the death scourge that we have going on right now also for the war scourge but once again like uh, th these are minions this was uh, okayish Alliance Wars offensive team, so yeah, apart from Star-Lord T'Challa, no one really holds value or add value for the most part, so I, I'm glad that I skipped this team, and it was mostly not relevant for uh, the Horseman characters. Okay, moving on, Young Avengers, Young Avengers, this is such a good team, and uh, when I first experienced with this team, uh, I was like, wow, I was blown away. This team was so good. Uh, first time I used it was on Avengers Tower, and my team was 460,000 or something like that, so very low investment. Most of the characters had like gear tier 12, maybe some had like gear tier 14, and this team was able to punch up huge on those later levels of the Avengers Tower, like level stage 80, maybe something like that. One of the later stages after 60. And I was like, what the hell? What the hell is this? All this team has so much sustain that uh, we can use them against uh, like massive punch-ups and they can still hold up. And uh, looking at them today, they were also required for one of the scourges or they were also recommended for one of the scourges. And uh, it was the only team that was worth investment. It was the Young Avengers and the A-Force and they were the most consistent team and uh, they are definitely a team that is still holding value. Not only in the last wars, Defense, even that they have a lot of counters, you have to use a strong team to defeat them. And uh, in Cosmic Crucible, they also hold value whether you use them on defense or on offense. And uh, if Avengers Tower ever, come, ever comes back, they are also going to hold value. So yeah, uh, as a whole, the team, the team is great. I think this team is going to still shine throughout uh, the next year. Uh, maybe it's not going to be like a super big investment for new players because the value of them in the Scourges is dropping off with the more scourges we have and at some point uh, it seems that after four scourges the they will change the requirements and they will no longer need it we'll see we'll have to see but uh, yeah this is still a uh, exciting team it's not a team that you have to prioritize and so on but it's definitely a team i think is going to hold the top value in uh, 2023 now let's take a look at the next team the dark hunters oh my god the dark hunters they were such a bait but they were if you wanted morgan of fay which was one of the best horseman characters one of the best characters throughout this year if you wanted morgan of fay you needed the web warriors and you also needed the dark hunters and and uh, this was another solution for the Heroes for Hire, which, which was a, a huge problem throughout uh, 2021 and 2022. But uh, looking back, uh, oh, man, these guys really didn't hold the value. Uh, very few, few situations where you can use them in, um, in the game. Alliance Wars offense against very specific teams for uh, like uh, city characters, anything like that. So yeah, it's unfortunate because they have some cool characters like Mordo, like uh, Morbius, like it's always Morbin time, right? And uh, Ghost Rider, Elsa, Doctor Voodoo, so some interesting characters. Their kits are just not good enough to hold value for uh, for other game modes. And uh, yeah, maybe if we have a new Cosmic Crucible meta with Misty characters, they will come back uh, into the light. But uh, no, now they have to stay in the shadow. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the only purpose that they had in terms of Apocalypse was to get Morgan Le Fay, but it's not even the case anymore. So yeah, unfortunately, they, they will die off in 2023 for sure. Now we have the Marauders. Oh my God, this team, oh my, this, this team is, 
it, it's so complicated to talk about this team because in one hand if you have the, the chance of letting them get started then they are unstoppable but if you don't have the chance of getting them started it's it's very very tough to to get value out of them and uh, with uh, Madeline Pryor was she was one she was like magic it was one character that changed the entire team but Madeline Pryor was not good enough and a reason I think why it's because the air speed is not on point her speed is 104 with Emma Frost that's gonna be like uh, 116 and uh, that's fine but uh, most of Alliance War teams on offense they are way faster and uh, and that's just not gonna cut it so it, it's it was kind of lame it was always a mid-range team it, it never had had a chance of shining in Alliance Wars, but in other game modes, if you have the chance, if you pair them up with different characters, for example, Madeline Pryor with the Eternals, or Mystique with the Magneto and uh, the Death Seed, uh, Emma Frost with other characters, uh, then the team still holds some value, so they are more, they are better separated than they are together, and I really think. I really think, write it on a paper and check out in a few months, I really think that villain mutants are going to be amazing when Apocalypse shows up. I mean, Apocalypse is a villain mutant, these guys are all have benefits with villain mutants, like Strife, he has benefits with villain mutants, not Marauders. And uh, yeah, when Ap Apocalypse drops, I think these guys are going to be amazing. All of them have connections with Apocalypse in the comics, in the TV shows, and uh, in the movies. So I really want to see that going forward. The, the Marauders are breaking apart and making teams with Apocalypse, or uh, replacing Emma Frost with Apocalypse and being an amazing team. So this is something that I'm really looking forward. They were not necessary for anything Apocalypse related for his unlock, but I think they will be paired up in the near future with them. Okay, let's move on. Now we have the first Horseman team. We have the Darkhold. And this team, oh my god, it's still amazing. This team, after released uh, maybe six months or I don't know how many months passed since the release of this team, and this team is still amazing. It still holds value. They are so flexible. They are so strong against uh, the other teams. And uh, they were mostly a, an arena team, but they are so solid that you can use them pretty much anywhere. They are amazing in Tower. They are amazing in Crucible. They are amazing in Alliance Wars, defense or offense, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the Dark Hold, they, they, they are going to hold up value. And investing on these characters is not only nice because they are going to unlock, uh, they are the first team that you, you need for, to unlock uh, Apocalypse. And uh, the Morgan Lefay, of course, is one of the horsemen. So, yeah, it, it's just amazing how much value they hold. But there are questions. What we are going to do in the future after Apocalypse? Are we going to pair up uh, all the horsemen with Apocalypse or is going, are we going to still keep uh, the, the horsemen characters on their respective teams? And uh, most of these characters now, a few of them, like we have Wong that is farmable, Strange Supreme is going to be farmable soon. Agatha is still the character that we still are looking forward for shards, but uh, yeah, this team is still amazing and uh, it has so much flexibility with a few of the characters and uh, you can uh, remove Scarlet Witch, unfortunately she's the weakest character, and replace her with anyone else and uh, this team is going to be even better, even better and uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. Moving on, let's go for the next team. We have uh, A-Force and A-Force uh, is... It's a team that uh, hit and miss. We have a few characters here that are very powerful, very flexible, and uh, they were suggested to unlock uh, Rogue, the second horseman of the apocalypse, but unfortunately, we also had the Young Avengers. So, because the Young Avengers, they were so powerful, they completely overshadowed the A-Force. And therefore, like, there was not a lot of reasons to invest in these characters. Now, in terms of uh, Spider-Woman, she's a great character to take to Dark Dimension. She's a character that uh, sometimes she shows up uh, in terms of value in Arena, in terms of Cosmic Crucible, in terms of Alliance Wars. Uh, of course, she works better with her team, but uh, it's a character that you can use independently. The same goes for Jessica Jones. Every time you need energy, every time you need someone to clear negative effects away, you call Jessica Jones. And uh, and that's amazing. That's amazing because even this week I used her on uh, the last 
run or on the last scourge for uh, Archangel, and her value is just amazing. Now, Captain Marvel, she was never good. She's just a uh, uh, a body, she's just a body that uh, is going to get pounded because she has a lot of health, she has a lot of armor and so on. And uh, Nikon Minoru, it's a character that uh, really failed to deliver. Her kit is all over the place, it, it revolves around RNG, it revolves around uh, having a lot of turns. And uh, while this team has some sustain, it's not the biggest sustain. And honestly, you just don't, don't have enough places where to use these characters, that's it. And uh, they only have four characters, so you need to pair them up with uh, another powerful character like uh, Namor in Alliance Wars and the Doctor Doom everywhere else. And, uh, and that's unfortunate, this team r really was a miss and hopefully we'll get an additional character in 2023 and bring this team to the light because the potential is there. The potential is there, maybe we'll get the other Captain Marvel, Mark, uh, Monica Rambeau or something. And and uh, then this team will finally be what it was supposed to be. Uh, okay, so yeah, moving on. Hopefully we'll have uh, uh, better news from A-Force uh, in the near future. Now we have the second Horseman team. We have uh, the Unlimited X-Men. And this team, wow, when it was released, yikes, this team was trash. Oh my effing god, this team was 100% trash. And uh, after they were uh, delivered, after they were out in the wild, the developers they had to rework the characters because the characters were just not good enough. They were just they just didn't have enough stats, and uh, it was very very disappointing. Phantom X is still a character that uh, most people dislike because he has uh, hardly any value. Maybe if he has a little bit more base damage or uh, more uh, crit damage, he his value would be a little bit more significant. But it's just not the case, and uh, yeah. Now, this team can still do amazing things. We still, the, the team can still do amazing things. It's a Cosmic Crucible team, so definitely it's going to hold value throughout 2023. But it's always on, on the edge. It's always on the edge of uh, being very bad, especially if you face uh, teams that are faster, faster than them, teams with trauma, teams with uh, turning winds. It's going to be a huge problem for the unlimited X-Men characters. Now, you have to gear them up either way. It's Apocalypse team, so yeah, there we go. And uh, some of these characters are becoming farmable now. We have Phantom X that is going to be farmable within a few weeks. And uh, hopefully Dazzler will be also farmable. Gambit is also farmable. And he's definitely one of the characters that you want to prioritize because he deals so much damage. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, throughout 2023, this team is still going to, to hold up. Moving on, we have the Hero As Guardians. Oh my god, this team is so trash. This team is unbelievably trash. It was it is okay. It is okay in Alliance Wars defense. It's like the Marauders. Uh, the problem is that uh, while the Marauders individually they have some value if you pair them up with different characters, with this team is not that it's not a case. It's not a case. It's very, very hard to justify the value. Because they don't hold the the stats outside of Alliance Wars, they don't have enough HP. For example, Valkyrie, she has very, very trash HP and she gets one shotted uh, fairly easy. And uh, outside of Alliance Wars, that's terrible because then the team completely falls apart and uh, that's not great. Now, this team was recommended, I'm going to use the correct word, I'm going to use recommended to unlock uh, Red Hulk, but uh, after the first pass, after the second pass, like the team just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping in terms of value, and you can see from my investment, and this was uh, this was like, it, it's so nonsensical, it was better for you to don't invest in these characters, for the way the Scourge works, it would be better for you to don't invest in the characters that, rather than investing in the characters because you want the characters to die. It's so effing dumb. It's so effing dumb. But uh, yeah, was the Euro as Guardians? The kits are good. The kits are good. It's just the speed and the stats that are atrocious. And uh, I don't know, maybe in the future we'll get uh, more uh, Asgardian characters. We are still waiting for Odin, right? So maybe finally we'll have like uh, a different hero Asgardian team or maybe you'll have like uh, the royal Asgardians or something like that because yikes this team 
Oh my god. Uh, oh, I, oh my god, no. Right, right now, I think it would be better for you to make a hybrid team with uh, the Wave 1 Avengers and the uh, Hero as Guardians than just pure Hero as Guardians. And yeah, they were recommended, but uh, with the more time that passes, they are uh, less recommended and uh, you kind of want to look forward to a Wave 1 Avengers full team for unlocking Red Hulk. And, uh, and that really is going to make art to justify investing on Sif, Heimdall, Valkyrie and uh, Lady Thor. Okay, moving on, moving on. We have Bionic Avengers and uh, this team is all over the place. This team is re recommended for uh, the Death Scourge to ob obtain Archangel. They are also a uh, must-have raid team and uh, the team is pretty decent and uh, uh, it, it has the same problem with Heroes Guardians. Their speed compromises a little bit their value. The, the kids are pretty good because they have uh, tons and tons of damage, they have buff removal, they have a lot of ability blocks, and, uh, and they have tons of barrier. Like, the team is pretty decent. So... Their value is... It's a little bit hit or miss. Uh, I think they are going to be good in the next season of Cosmic Crucible. Uh, they, I think they are going to be good, uh, or they are going to be decent in Alliance Wars as a defensive team, or maybe an offensive team if we start having a lot more uh, unavoidable characters or characters with uh, with evades on defense. So they are still going to hold some value. A minor change to the Cosmic Crucible landscape, and they are definitely going to be top of the meta. So it's it's a team that we need to keep an eye on, uh, because uh, yeah, at any moment they can pop up as being uh, this amazing team. If you replace like Captain America, Cap, uh, not Captain America, I mean uh, Iron Man with uh, someone else, it uh, it can really change them. And. Uh, they are also required to unlock uh, Archangel, and uh, that's a good thing because uh, they double up in value in the raids and also in the Scourge. So it's definitely worth the investment, and I'm, I'm happy with the investment I made on them. Okay, now we have the Gamma team. Oh my god, this team. This team is all over the place as well because if you have them on defense, or if you have them on offense, the value is completely different. If you are controlling these characters, they will have huge value, they have huge potential, but if you are not controlling these characters, they are kinda trashy. Like I mentioned before, Uncanny can punch up 400k on these guys on defense in Cosmic Crucible, and uh, and that's lame AF. <laughs> that's, that, that's lame AF for uh, uh, Horseman team. So it's a team that, uh, if you want to hold value on them, you need to use them on defense. Uh, in terms of, like, uh, they are amazing in Alliance Wars, everyone knows they were designed for Alliance Wars, they have insane benefits in Alliance Wars. And in the other game modes, like, sometimes you can use them on the raid nodes, in case your web warriors wipe out. So they are decent for that as well. And in terms of Cosmic Crucible, it's another team that is one step away of being 100% meta. So we'll have to wait and see for the next season to see if it's going to benefit uh, bio characters or maybe some kind of global characters or something like that because the potential is there and then we just have to adapt to see if they are going to use them on defense or offense. Now this is a horseman team so because it's a horseman team because it's required for apocalypse then you have to max them out you have to take them at least to gear tier 16 and if you want to max apocalypse you need to take them eventually to gear tier 17. Moving on, moving on, let's talk about the Tangled Web, the Tangled Web, the, this, this team, wow, this team changed everything. So with the release of, Tang of uh, Spider Weaver and Spider-Man 2099, they completely changed the Cosmic Crucible, Alliance Wars, Arena, even Arena, they completely changed how Arena worked, and, uh, and, th and that's massive, only two characters, they completely changed everything. and. Uh, Spider Weaver, on her own, she's beyond amazing. She's probably the best character right now in uh, in Marvel Strike Force. 100% plug and play. You can use her literally anywhere in the game mode, and she's gonna have huge value. The other characters depends on where you are using them. Spider Man 2099 huge in Cosmic Crucible, Alliance Wars, and Arena, but. Uh, in Dark Dimension, for example, he's 100% trash, which is yikes. If Avengers Tower ever comes back, this team is going to be amazing, because you can choose which enemies you are going to face, and that's going to be great for you. Now, we are not talking about Spider-Man Noir. 
<laughs> at least for a reason. Spider-Man War, like, this kit is not bad. The kit is pretty decent, and especially the way this team works. Uh, because uh, Spider-Man 2099, in most cases, is going to apply defense down to the enemies, and Spider-Man War is going to just destroy your enemies. The problem is that uh, he needs to have a lot of yellow stars and red stars, and most people don't have big yellow stars and red stars on him, and therefore his value is it's still not showing up. They can be used in Cosmic Crucible right now, and uh, the team is great, it's one of the best teams there. But uh, like I said, like, if you don't have a big Spider-Man War, you are, it's going to be hard to see the value, because uh, yeah, you really need a big, big, big Spider-Man War to see, oh, holy shit, this guy is amazing. But yeah, unfortunately, it's not the case right now. We'll see. We only have three characters. Maybe in the future we'll get more uh, uh, Tangled Web characters, or maybe we'll have a rework to the Web Warriors that will pair them up with uh, with these guys. But we have to wait and see. I forgot to mention something about Spider Weaver. She's the first strike character that is required for Apocalypse. Therefore, you can max out the Spider Weaver. But uh, but yeah, the other ones not so much. Okay, now we have the Underworld. Uh, oh my god, this team is such a hit and miss. We have Mr. Negative. Because Mr. Negative is so fast, his value is trash. It's literally trash. You need a character that is faster than him to apply negative effects to the enemies, so after Mr. Negative can spread those negative effects. If it's not the case, then he's not gonna hold up. He doesn't have value, his minions take too long to do anything, and uh, it's a big, big yikes. Th this team is decent in Alliance Wars defense and offense, but uh, elsewhere in the game is just, uh, oh, uh, the team really, really doesn't cut it. Now, I'm gonna be honest, the team individually, amazing. Kingpin, amazing rework, amazing character. Nobu, depending on the team where you pair them up with, is gonna be amazing. Taskmaster, the same thing. Uh, only Green Goblin is the character that is 100% trash and deserves zero investment. But the, the other characters, they hold huge value in terms of plug and play characters. They are not required for anything apocalypse related. And. Uh, and that uh, makes it very, very hard to invest in them. Once again, they are great plug-and-play characters, they are great individually, but you have like no reason to invest in them if you are in this journey for Apocalypse. So maybe in the future, maybe you'll have a different Apocalypse in one year from now, and uh, you'll have to invest in them. But for now, this is something that uh, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see because, once again, these are very good plug-and-play characters and uh, their value will uh, change uh, depending on uh, what's going on in the other game modes. Wakanda, oh my god, Wakanda, so, the Wakanda well, all over the place as well. So they got reworked from the best Ultimus 5 raid team to one of the best Cosmic Crucible teams with Killmonger and Mbaku. After that, we had two new characters released based on the movie. And it was uh, a Black Panther 1mm, aka Bashenga, and we have Nakia. And wow, Bashenga is a character that on this team is just amazing, really, really amazing. And this team is super, super powerful. And they were also required, or they were also recommended, that's the correct word, recommended. They were also recommended to obtain Archangel. So it was a team that was easily uh, justifiable to invest in them. And uh, man, just take them to the moon. I really like Mbaku. Uh, I even gave Teal Gear to him. I have six red stars on him. And he's just so amazing. He's an amazing tank, huge survivability, insane damage and utility for the team and uh, the, uh, overall the entire team is just amazing they're still going to hold value for a long time in terms of Cosmic Crucible, Alliance Wars, Avengers Tower all those game modes and, uh, and that's great because uh, this is the type of teams that we need it's teams that hold value throughout, uh, throughout the years and uh, that we can decide if they are going to be useful or not it's in our hand, like, it's like the uncanny it's in our hand if we're going to invest in them more or not uh, depending on uh, what's going on in the meta. So I'm really happy with this team. Overall, it's uh, one of my favorite teams right now in the game and uh, definitely worth uh, keeping an eye on them throughout uh, 2023. Now we have the Dead Seed. Oh my God, Dead Seed. Uh, this is another uh, horseman of uh, the Apocalypse team with uh, Archangel and this team 
Uy, uh, it's uh, it's it's powerful. This team is very very powerful, and uh, if you can catch, uh, if the enemies are not fast enough in stopping this team, then they will just roll over you. Because as soon as they start going, you are not going to be able to stop them. Uh, they're not you're not going to be able to stop them now they don't have the best stats i'm mean, going to be honest they have like 30 percent less stats compared to the other teams but uh, in terms of power they are pretty good and they are somewhat flexible that you can divide the team in two and pair them up with the different characters like brotherhood characters or new warriors uh, stuff like that and they are still going to be quite amazing. They have a decent value right now in uh, Alliance Wars, not top of the meta, but it's like a minus a team. And uh, in Cosmic Crucible, they also have huge value if you pair them up with the right characters. Uh, I have not released uh, a lot of Cosmic Crucible characters recently, but I'm going to start doing it again when I have more time to edit them. And uh, and yeah, like uh, this team, it's going to surprise. I, I will show you a few matches of Cosmic Crucible with these guys that you'll be like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's, it's definitely something. Uh, and yeah, this is Apocalypse team, so they are worth all the investment. I got very, very lucky with the rest stars on these characters, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do to us going forward, especially with Archangel Max it out, because Archangel has some of the highest base damage in the game, and uh, when he does damage, it really hurts. And uh, and yeah, I really want to see this team going forward when we have the Archangel Max it out, because right now it's a little bit misleading, but they are already destroying the, the raids. Uh, 3.5 uh, Doom raids, they completely destroy them. So yeah, this team is probably designed for the next raid, the, the, four, the Doom 4, or the Ormamu teams, or whatever is coming next, uh, because yeah, they they are way beyond what we need for right now in terms of content. And now we have uh, uh, the upcoming teams. We have the Rebirth team, uh, and we're going to talk about this team in upcoming video. And we have uh, also the Masters of Evil. But this is going to be a 2023. Those teams are going to be. 2023 teams. This one is going to replace the Web Warriors, and this one is going to be a Cosmic Crucible team, so it's definitely something that we'll have to talk about going forward. And the AIM team, yes, AIM team, best minion team in 2023. It was uh, my speculation based on their kits, it was my theory crafting, and then they come through. Uh, some people say that the Ravagers are better if you have them at the same level as the, as the Ravagers. No, these ones are going to be better. We are comparing like Gear T16 Ravagers to Gear T14 AIM and you are telling me that Ravagers are better? <laughs> Bro, like, let's be honest. If these do the same thing with less gear, then they are better. And that's it. And in the near future, 2023, it might be the case that we'll have uh, another AIM character that uh, might not rework the team, but might give them some additional value on specific situations. And uh, that's it for the teams that were released. We have here on the top uh, all the Apocalypse characters. As you can see, I have uh, them pretty much maxed out. And to unlock Apocalypse, you need characters with Isolate Blue level 4. Now, let's do a review on my Isolate Blue level 4. Let's see if I'm ready for uh, Apocalypse. And the first team for Apocalypse is going to be the Dark Old. And uh, the Dark Old for me right now, I only have two characters with Isolate Blue level 4, which is weird, right? It's It was the first Apocalypse team, uh, but it's the team I've been holding back because I was not sure about this, some of the Isolates and uh, Morgan Le Fay and Agatha. That was fine. I knew right away they were Striker and Skirmisher. But the other ones, I'm not sure about it. And I'm going to hold on this team as much as possible and uh, make the decision when uh, we are very, very close to Apocalypse. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the Unlimited X-Men, and this one's easy investment. The eyes away for them was uh, clear right away. And I'm just holding on uh, on Phantom X a little bit because there are better characters than him. But yeah, you can see I have four out of five, uh, so I'm very close of being ready with this team. Now with the Gamma team, 
Uh, the Iso Weight, you can see that I also have 4 out of 5. The only character that I don't have Iso Weight Blue level 4 is Braun, because I don't know what to do with this guy. The Iso Weight is still uh, uh, debatable, uh, depending on where you are using him in the game. And the other ones, pretty much easy. Some people like to use a different option with Red Hulk, but I'm very happy with Red Hulk as a skirmisher because of how he interacts with Abomination and the OG Hulk, but also how he interacts with other Horseman characters. So, so very very close of being ready with Apocalypse with the Gamma team. And finally we have the Dead Sea team and yes I know this team was just released but I already have two characters with Isolate Blue level 4, Dark Beast and Archangel and I'm ready to get also the Nemesis to Isolate Blue level 4 so that's going to be 3 out of 5 characters and that makes me to have 2 on the under, on Dark Old two on the death seed and another two on uh, the other two teams so that's going to be six characters away from apocalypse beyond the strike characters that we still don't know nothing about uh, but yeah that's my journey throughout 2023 very very excited for uh, the next year we'll be able to obtain uh, hopefully apocalypse and uh, maybe start the next one year and a half journey through through Marvel Strike Force to obtain the next uh, super, hyper, mega, legendary character, Megazord, and uh, yeah, that's it guys, that's the year in review of the teams that were released, it was very exciting to play Marvel Strike Force throughout this year, a lot of ups and downs in terms of emotions, and uh, i looking forward for 2023, and uh, and see if uh, if the game keeps improving because uh, I think it's in a good direction, but it, it could improve a little bit better and make everyone much happier. But I think, for example, the Watchmen characters being available for new players that was huge. That motivated more players to stick around, uh, especially new players, and uh, it uh, lowered the gap between uh, paying players and uh, free-to-play players or uh, veteran players with uh, new players and that's that's a good thing for the health of the game and that's something that i want to see more in the near future so that's going to be the video guys i hope you guys enjoyed this journey throughout 2023 those that were the investments i made those that were decisions i made that allow me to be so close of obtaining apocalypse without ever spending money directly obtaining that isolated blue uh, and uh, those resources that are required for apocalypse it was all based on gameplay uh, yes i spent characters on i spent money on characters that's true 100 but the other things are not the other things are based on your performance and uh, and that's a good thing if you can keep going forward with your performance not just by spending money i, I really think that's a good thing and we need to have this balance between uh, spending and not spending uh, in the game uh, to make sure that the game is also sustainable for the company but there we go 2022 in review let's get ready for 2023 and that's going to be the video guys i hope you guys enjoy it if you did make sure to smash that like button and if you found the video helpful entertaining make sure you share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more marvel strike force content and i will catch you guys later